Shepherd of a soul, Savior of a soul, Lover of a soul. We are on the Lord's side. We will never give up. We And all the children, my Lord, my Father, and everyone that has come to join us, Lord Jesus. None of us shall go empty from your presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And all glory, honor, adoration will be unto you, our Father, now and forevermore in Jesus Christ. We are praying. Amen. Beloved children, most high God, I greet you with the love of God. And I thank God Almighty who have made it possible for all of us, his children, to once again gather before him to hear his word of chastisement, his word of love, his word of reproof, the word that me and you needed more than any other thing. The word of God. Anyone that has the word of God will never walk into darkness. Will never stumble. Because the psalmist made us to understand that the word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet. And if the word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet, we will walk in accordance. We will walk in agreement to his plan and purpose so that at the end, we, every children in this mountain, all of us, we will be what the Lord says we will be in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, children of God, because we have sung that song, we started with it, that we will be what the Lord says we will be. We will be the head and not the tail. We will be above, not below. We will lead to nations. I'm not to borrow. That is why this morning, the word that the Lord Almighty has for me and you is that topic that we must be able to be aware of. We must have to be aware of it if truly we want to be whom God wants us to be. And what is that topic this morning? It is titled Avoiding Bad influence in our life. Most of us that have our pens and our papers, put it down. Avoiding bad influence in our life. If we must be what God wants us to be, we must do everything humanly possible to avoid bad influences. Because bad influence will contaminate, we pollute what God has said concerning us. That glorious destiny that God has created us with. We must do everything humanly possible to do what? To run away, to avoid bad influences. 
Now, uh, Sister uh, Sharon, help us to uh, go to the book of James, chapter 4, verse 4, while uh, Brother Benjamin uh, opened to the book of First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 33. Let us see what the word of God tells us as we continue in this topic. But Benjamin, if you get to First Corinthians, read first uh, 15, uh, verse 33. God bless you, sir. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Be not deceived, evil communications, corrupt good manners. Hmm. God bless you, son of God. See that? You see the way we start today? He said, be not deceived. Let nobody deceive you. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Are you hearing me this morning? It does matter. The Bible said, be not deceived. Let no one deceive you. Evil communication. Evil companion. Evil friendship. Corrupts good manner. Be not deceived. Oh, it does not matter. Just for us. It does, it, does, it does matter. Before you know it, it begins to graduate in your life. Avoiding bad influences in our life. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manner. It is not only for me and you. If we begin to ponder into what Brother Benjamin just read, who are we supposed to take in as our friend? Is it a God-fearing person? Or people that say it doesn't matter? Or people that say, I don't believe in God? I don't go to church? I don't read that book they call Bible? Evil communication corrupts good manner. Now, Sister Sharon, are you there in book of James chapter 4, verse 4? Yes, sir. God bless you. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. The Lord Most High God. Cure ED. In those days when we're in school, when you know what you have been sent to do in mathematics, when you finish, say cure ED. Finish. Ye adulterers. Ye adulterers. Know ye not. Do you not know that the friendship of this world is enmity with God. When you are so much engrossed, when you are so much influenced with the things of the world, you are gradually making yourself an enemy of God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is totally an enemy of God. And that is why the God, God Almighty has brought this topic for us this morning. For us to dwell on. Anyone that so much get himself or herself dipped in, entangled in the affairs of this world, you will have by yourself turn your back on the things of God. And by so doing, you become an enemy of God. And answer me. Who is that enemy of God that will enter into the kingdom of God? Is it possible? No. Everyone that's the enemy of God knows where they belong. And where is that place? In hell fire. So we must be careful, children of God. This topic is very important in our life as children of God. Very, very important. As me and you, we are growing up. I am still growing. Like you. As we are growing up, we must be aware of what the word of God is telling me and you. Why? Because we are living in a corrupt world today. In a world where the fear of God is no more in the heart, heart of people. People do anything they like. We are living in a world where evil is being what's celebrated. 
people who are doing evil things, that is the people they, you know, they, they, uh, 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 they celebrate. People with tattoo everywhere. People that walk naked in the streets and they said it's fashion. Television will carry them. But when you are doing the things of God, living the life according to the word of God, nobody sees you. This is the kind of world we are living today. And that is why God Almighty has brought this topic for us to dwell this morning. Avoiding bad influences. Why must we avoid bad influences? If we must enter into the kingdom of God. If we must on the last day see God in glory, we must do what? We must do everything humanly possible to be away. The life we live, the people we are allowed to influence our life. That is the reason. Children of God, the Bible asks us as his loving children to be careful. Why? So that the attitudes so that the opinions of the ungodly people does not shape our perspective and negatively influence our life. We must be careful that what? That the attitudes of the people of the world, that the opinions that we hear even in the school, even in from teachers, but we know those attitudes, those opinions, they are against the word of God. We must be careful, children, so that those opinions and those attitudes, it does not begin to reshape us. Remember, we have sung already in the morning as we start, that we will be what God says we'll be. So that those negative opinions, so that those negative attitudes does not change that thing that God has said that we will be. God has already called me and you to be what? The light of the world. Negative attitudes. Negative opinions will turn light into darkness. So we must be careful. The Bible made us understand in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. Uh, Brother Stephen, go to Romans 12, verse 2. Emmanuel, uh, look for uh, uh, Colossians, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 8. Colossians 2, verse 8. But first, let Brother Stephen open to the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Let's go. Rastimin, are you there? Where is Benjamin? They are there no more. Can I read? What about me? Okay, maybe they are their network. Okay. Um praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um Samuel, uh, Madhubibe, open to the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. And Emmanuel, Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. So, Samuel, let, let's go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Yes, sir. And be, and be not conformed to this world, mm. but be transformed by the renewing of, of your mind hmm. that ye might prove what is that good mm -hmm. an acceptable and perfect will, will of God Amen, God bless you, more grace, more wisdom we started by what brother Benjamin told us, he said be ye not deceived now brother Samuel is now tell us he said be not be not conformed to the what to this world be not conformed. That may be a, a big word, but I know most of you understand. What does it mean to conform? What does conformity mean? To conform children of most high God? It means action in agreement. Action in agreement with the prevailing social standards. 
attitudes or practices. Conformity means, I repeat, action in agreement with the prevailing standards, social attitudes or practices. Even though they are not right, but because they are the social norm. That is what everybody does now. That is what we see in TV. That is what the teacher says. But we know it is not right. The word of God says against it. Now people now conform. It is the order of the day. Oh, my friends does it. Oh, my teacher says so. But the word of God is saying no to it. So the Bible is telling us, according to Brother Samuel, he said we should not conform to this world, but we must be transformed. We must do what? Children, we must be transformed by renew of our mind. How do we renew our mind? With the word of God. It is when the word of God renew our mind, renew our attitudes, renew our thoughts, different from the people of the world. That is when we begin to prove what is that good. Those things that are what? Acceptable norms to the standard of God. And that is when we begin to be perfect. Don't forget, God asked me and you. He said we should be perfect because he, our father, is what? Perfect. When our mind is being renewed, children of God, we begin to do things in accordance to the will of God. That is exactly what this verse means. It's very rich. If we take it one after the other. He said when our mind is being transformed, we begin to prove that at its good, that that is acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if we go further to that book of uh, um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, if they may hear you, I read for, uh, louder. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Beware lest any man spoil you through phys physiology, philosophy, philosophy, and vain descent. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Amen. God bless you. I hope we heard what he read. More knowledge. But a man is telling us again, it's a warning. The other one, be not deceived. This one, be not conformed. This one, beware. All in the same line. Children, he said, beware, children, lest any man spoil you through what? Through philosophy and vain deceit. Today, many things are being taught in the school. They are not right to our spiritual life. Those teachings are against the word of God, telling us to be enemy of God. The Bible says we should not be what? We should beware. We should be aware. Let no man spoil us through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. If somebody can tell you in the school that it does not matter, your body belongs to you, you can pierce your nose from your nose to your eyes, to your tongue, to everywhere. It does not matter. It's a philosophy of what? Of vain deceit. Deceit that at the end of the day leads one to hellfire. Somebody telling you that you are living in a, in a free world. A girl can turn to a boy or a boy can choose to turn to a girl. That is what a philosophy from the pit of hell. Bible is telling us this one. It says, beware. Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vent the After the what? The tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Any teaching or philosophy outside the word of God is from the pit of hell. Children, are you hearing me this morning? Any teaching outside the word of God is what? From the pit of hell. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is um, Benjamin and uh, Stephen, are they back? Or are they still having problems with their network? Okay. The computer just turned off. I'm, I'm connected on my phone. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. Don't take control. Now, children, having said this, 
that avoidance of bad influences is required in our life if we must make it to the kingdom of God. The question now is, how do we recognize, listen to me, how do we recognize and respond to the people in our lives who may indeed be of what bad influence or negative influence in our life? How do we, how do we recognize them? And how do we respond if we must be what God says to be? Very necessary. This topic is very, very important. Anybody that does not want himself to be distracted, because I know there are many pressures. I know we are just we are once like you. Talk less of when you now find yourself in a different society. There are many things that they put before you, and the way they present it looks as if it's beautiful, it's good. But that that philosophy, that teaching, is gradually leading one to hell. So that is why we must make the word of God to be what? A compass of our life. How do we recognize and respond to those bad influences? It is what first? Through the word of God. Through the word of God, we'll be able to recognize and know how to respond. So as the Bible have warned us to beware of, there are some foolish attitudes and behaviors. Some foolish attitudes and behaviors that we must not know that. N-O-T. Not to romance with it. We must not at all allow ourselves to be entangled with. If we know that we want to do what? We want to occupy our mansion that Jesus Christ said, I am going to prepare a mansion for you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If your own will not be empty, there are some attitudes, there are some behaviors, there are some influences that we must not allow to be seen in our life. Children, even as we are growing, we must not allow as children of God. For example, number one, Gossiping and division. What do I say? Gossiping and divisions must be far from us. Must be far from us. Now, uh, Dublin Branch, can I can I see your hands? Okay. Um. Chisholm, go to Proverbs Proverb 16, verse 28. Proverbs 16, 28. And uh, James, James, go to Proverbs 20, 19. And Daniel, Daniel Island, you go to Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 16. Leviticus 19, 16. Yes, sir. But first, uh, Sister Chisholm, we read Proverbs 16, 28. While Brother James, we read Proverbs 20, verse 19. So, Sister Chisholm, let's go. God bless you. Can, can you repeat that again? I love that was gone. Don't say chief friends. So say best of friends. Sister Chisholm, God bless you. Sit down. More grace, more wisdom. We are Sister Chisholm. See, we are talking about attitudes that we must not allow to be seen in our life. Our children of God. One gossiping and what and division. Now, Sister Chisholm said in the book of Proverbs chapter sixteen verse twenty-eight. He said, "A forward as I am with him, and other other friends are here. Maybe as in the church and before." And you go to another person again. You go to Israel. Israel is the other side. He says, Israel, come. The person is showing what a seed of this God. Sister Chisholm translation is separates what best of friends. 
such attitudes must not be seen in the life of children of God. Such attitudes, cry for mercy, the person is going to hell. If you, you can imagine, this person is your best friend. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, you don't know what caused trouble. You don't know that one satanic agent has come to take that us as well. Amen. A third bearer. Flatter it with his lips. Yes. God bless you. You see, you see where Bible is pointing again. He said, He that goes about as a third bearer. Hey. Looking for where to, you know, to uh, gossip. Radio without battery. He that goes about, the Bible says he does what? He reveals secret. Don't confront to that person. Therefore, it's an instruction. That's the word of God. He said, therefore, meddle not with him. Meddle not with this what? Don't have anything to do with that very person. That is what a bad influence. Meddle not with him that flatter it with his lips. Even though as he goes about talking, yeah, he might say, hey, he might say, hey, hey, how are you? It's not true. What he has in mind is as poisonous as what? As next venom. Such attitudes are what? Very, very, very dangerous and must not be seen in the life of children of God. Now in the book of Leviticus, because it, this was what we are saying is the instruction that God said we should not do if we must be what he has created us to be. Now let us see the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 19, verse 16. Leviticus 19, 16. I read his name. Amen. Amen. Thou shalt not go up and down as thy tail bearest among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Huh. God bless you, son. That is God saying this by himself. Thou shalt not go up and down. You don't have any business. You go from this way, that way. The person that goes that way is what Satan. Because when Christ asks him, Satan, where are you coming from? He said, I'm going through and through. So a third bearer, a gossiper, goes through and through. He said, thou shalt not go up down, up and down as a third bearer among thy people. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. If you are doing so, I am watching you. And I know how to do what? How to do how to reward you. If you will not run away from such attitude, I know where to keep you. And where that I know where to direct you. And that is hell. So such attitudes, they are of bad influence. They must not be seen in our life as children of God. Secondly, children of God, one of the bad influences we should not allow into our life, if we must be whom God has created us to be, is what? Anger and violence. Avoiding anger and violence. Anger and what? And violence. Okay, I can see that uh, bro Benjamin and um, Stephen is back again. So, bro Benjamin, go to uh, Proverbs 16, verse 19. Uh, while uh, Stephen goes to Proverbs 22, verse 24. Proverbs 16, 29, and Proverbs 22, verse 24. Let's go. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. 19. Yes. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Amen. Where did you read now? Proverbs 16, 19. Proverbs 16, 29. <clears throat> That's what I said. Man. Or 29, sorry. A violent man entices his neighbor and mm. leads him in a way that is not good. Amen. See, see, that? see what we're saying? God bless you, son. Amen. A violent man, an angry man, entices his neighbor, entices his friend, and leads him into the way that is not good. And any way that is not good is what? The way of Satan. It's what, what we are talking about, what? Avoiding bad influence. Any friend, all that you learn from him is how to be violent. How to violent? Run away from such friend. 
The Bible is saying here, he said, a violent man entitled his neighbor. He will crop into what he's doing. You see some children, they call it social, social, social disorder. Maybe you're driving past the, an estate, a child from nowhere, nothing. You will just carry a, a, a rock and you throw it your glass. Spirit of destruction. Satan has entered into them. He will entice you to come and follow them. To be destructive. Causing people pain. It will teach you into the line of what is not good. Now, if we go further to Proverbs 22, verse 24. Proverbs 22, verse 24. Verse 7. Proverbs 22, verse 24. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. Make your friendship with an, an angry man and with a fierce man. Thou shalt not go. Make no friendship with what? An angry man. And with a foolish man, you should not hang out with. I paraphrase. Don't go with him. He is going to influence you in a negative way. He is going to influence you that you will not become whom God has created you to be. He is going to influence you into hell. Have nothing to do with our with an angry friend. Because mommy or daddy corrects him or her, he will not return back to the house again. He will go out and never come back again. Or he will say, I want to kill myself. Why? Because he or she is being corrected not to do a certain thing. The Bible says we should have nothing to do with that person. Until the person cries unto God for mercy. The person has to be delivered. Such person, Bible says we have to be careful. We should have nothing to do with the person. We must hang out with people who can have a positive influence in our life. Friends that we can stay together and discuss the things of God. Friends that can help us. They say, iron sharpness iron in a positive way. Friends that you can meet, they will ask you, what was the Bible st study yesterday? What, what was it like? Oh, I learned something. Oh, it really pained me that I missed it. Oh, don't worry. I wrote something down. I will give you some of my books to look into. These are friends that we need to allow into our life so that we will surely become whom God says we will be. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise that lack the fear of God, we must not have anything to do with them. What I say, friends that does not have what the fear of God in them, we should beware of them. Let somebody go to the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 3 verse 5. Malachi 3 verse 5. Why somebody, again, should go to the book of Romans chapter 3. Verse 14 to 18. Uh, where are my friends here? Um, brother uh, Joel. Joel, go to Malachi 3 5. Why, brother Emmanuel? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, um, praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. These cameras that are off. Are the people with us or are they not with us? If you know you are connected, please let your camera be on. Let your cameras be on, please. God bless you. Now, uh, Bright, Bright, you go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 3, from verse 14 to 18. Please let the cameras be on. I say again, obedience is better than sacrifice. It's good we see ourselves. So, um, whom do I say to read uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 5? Hello? 
Joel, your mic is still mute. Praise the Lord. I have a problem with the laptop. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll still come back to you if that is the case. Uh, Bro Joseph. Okay. Bro Joseph, please open to the book of Malachi chapter 3, verse 5. Uh, while um, uh, the other person should stand, uh, bright uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 14 to 18. So let's go Malachi 3, verse 5. Malachi 3, verse 5. I read Jesus name. Yes. Yes, sir. We are talking about what? The people that does not have the fear of God in them, they are what? Of a bad influence. The Bible says we should be careful with them. So let's go. Malachi 3 5. Now come near you for judgment. I will Amen. Be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage, earned and widows and orphans, and against those who turn away and alien. Because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Hmm. God bless you, son of Most High God. Says the, the, the Lord of hosts. the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false people that does other things beware the bible said and against those that oppress the highly in his wages the widow and the fatherless and that turn aside the stranger from his right and what and fear not me people that does all these things are people that doesn't have the fear of god if you have the fear of god whatever you do children of god must be in accordance what the Bible says. If I would say run away from it, you have to run away. But when you do not have the fear of God, that's the kind of friends that we, we, we see in school or we hang out with. Oh, I don't I don't believe in God. I don't I don't know God. The fear of God is it's not in the life of that person. We need to be very, very careful with that person before he will influence us in a negative way. Mind you, why we just read the Bible said, God said, I am coming with my judgment. Soon and very soon, I am coming. And for us not to stand the anger of, uh, of God, for us not to see his anger on that last day, we must be careful that people with bad influences, lack of the fear of God, that they do not influence our life in a negative way. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, yeah. uh, brother, um, Right, Romans chapter 3, 14 to 18. Let's go. Are you still there, uh, Brock Bright? They're gone. It's not there. Okay. Praise Master G. Spell Israel. Brother Israel, are you with us? Yeah. Uh -huh. God bless you, sir. So, open to the book of Romans, chapter 3. Romans, verse 14, yeah? 14 to 18. God bless yeah. you, sir. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, hmm. he, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their way, and way to peace have they not known. Hmm. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Amen. Yeah. God bless you, son of most high God. Lord, continue to increase your wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, these are 
what the Bible is telling me and you for people that will have to be aware of. Those people, right, Israel said, they are, whose mouth is full of what? Cursing and bitterness. They don't, they, nothing good comes from their mouth. Only cursing. You will die. You do this. You do this. No good word comes out of their mouth. Only cursing. Only bitterness. But Israel said in verse 15, their feet are swift to shed blood. They are very clever, very quick in what? In destruction. In causing pains. In shedding blood. 16, destruction and misery are in their ways. 17, and the way of peace, they don't know. They don't like anything peaceful. Those violent children outside there, those ones that have gone out of the control of their parents. The Bible is saying this morning, open your ears, children, and listen to me. We need to be very, very careful. Don't allow them to influence you. All of you, thank God for this ministry that have time for children. We are not praising our church, but I know it's not every church that have time every week to be able to gather the children, to build, to, to teach them the way of the Lord. Why are we doing that? Because we are going in accordance to the word of God. He said, turn a child in the way he or she will grow. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. So for you not to depart from the true word of God that you are hearing, you must be careful so that you are not being influenced by what? By people that have what? Bad characters. And the last verse, where brought Israel just read, verse 18, he said, there is no fear of God before their eyes. That is why they behave the way they behave. And that is why we need to be careful so that we will not go where they will go at the end of the age. We must what? We must have the fear of God in us. If God has spoken, he will surely do what he said. He said, I am coming. My judgment is fast coming. It's in my hand and I will reward. If God has said it, he will surely do. Now, furthermore, we must be careful people with lying tongues for them not to influence us. People with what? Lying tongues that they will not influence us. Samuel uh, um, um, Osesle, are you there? Open your Bible to the book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. Proverbs 12, 22. And uh, Yes. Wagon is there. Um, uh, um, uh, Harry. God bless you. Open your Bible to the book of uh, um, John 8 44. John 8 44. But Brother Samuel or says Lefes, tell us what the Bible said in the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 22. God bless you, sir. Amen. I abomination to the Lord, but they that he truly Amen. Amen. I think there's a little bit, bit noise. Repeat it again. Let's hear what you what the what the Lord is telling us there. Say it again, bro. Samuel, God bless you, sir. Lie leaves abomination to the Lord, but hmm. they that they truly are his delight. God bless you, son of God. I think this one is self-explanatory. It's very, very straightforward. It said, lying lips are what? Abomination to the Lord. And anything that's abomination can never enter the kingdom of God. Children, are you hearing me? Anything that is abomination cannot and can never enter into the kingdom of God. It said, lying lips are what? An abomination. Before God will use that word, it is a very big word. It's an abomination. In other words, it's something that I can never have an eye to look at it at all. So people that you know have that very tendency amongst you in the school outside there. They will lie. Anything you ask them is lie. Be careful so, it, so that you, you don't copy lie from them. Before, when daddy or mommy asks you something, you will tell them exactly the way it is. But all of a sudden, you see yourself. Instead of saying the truth, you put small lie. There's something like small lie and big lie before God. Lie is lie. 
So we must be careful, people with that very tendency, for them not to influence our life. Now that you have heard from the word of God that lying lips is what an abomination before God. So for our life not to be an abomination before God, we must be careful that we are not being influenced by the people with that bad behavior. We should run away from their company. As Brother Samuel made us to understand. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anyone that lies, anyone that is being known with lies, you are not a, a, a son of God. You are not a daughter of God. Let's see the book of uh, John 8, 44. John 8, 44. Amen? John 8, 44. Quickly, let's go, please. Our time is... I in Jesus' name. Amen. You are of your, your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He mm. was a murderer from the beginning and mm. does not stand in the truth because mm. there is no truth in him. When mm. he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own res resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. Amen. Mm. God bless the Son of Most High God. Please, the host, there are some people and attendee. Let's be very careful. So don't keep them there. So the chief manufacturer of all lies is who? Satan. Have you not seen that one can claim I'm a child of God? But if you're a liar, if you're a liar, you have by yourself made yourself a son of Satan instead of a son of God. Brother Benjamin made us understand clearly. Here, Jesus Christ is referring to liars. He said, Ye are of your father the devil. Ye are of your father the devil. And the loss of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, his lie is like, you know, even if you are not careful, you believe. When he tells you good morning, if, you are, if, if there is any watch around, look around, it might be evening. If he tells you I am here, it's not there at all. He said, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of all lies. So if he's the father of all lies, which means he has a children. Because he cannot be a, say, I'm a father without children. If he's a father of all lies, he has children. So anyone that dwells in lies, you are by yourself a child of what? Satan. Child of devil. So for us not to be influenced into hell, for us not to become a child of Satan, we must not have anything to do with friends that have this lying tendency. They have this lying spirit and they want to influence our life. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why we are bringing all these things? So that we will become whom God has said will be. And that uh, aspect I need us to uh, uh, touch. We must be aware. We must be aware about people with what that have the spirit of greed. Spirit of greed. Samuel uh, Ireland, you read something now. We must be what careful with people with this tendency of greed. Greed is very very what dangerous. If you are, if you have this spirit, there is nothing your daddy or your mommy gives you that you be you with sufficient with. Your eyes will always be out there, and by so doing, you are endangering your soul. The blessing of God, even in your life, will not be enough for you. The spirit of greed. Let's see the book of Proverbs, Proverbs fifteen, verse twenty-seven. And I will tell us, maybe I'll run this if, if, if I still have time. I will tell us what greed can do in somebody's life in the book of Second Kings. Then first of all, let us read Proverbs 15, verse 27. Let's go. Proverbs 15, verse 27. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. But he that has 
Heart is good, it's life. God bless you, son. Samuel is saying, he said what? He that is greedy of gain troubled his own world, his own house. If you are greed, if you are the of, there is no peace in the house where you live. Because mommies will try to do everything. You are not satisfied because your eye is outside there. Oh, there is a trainer that my friend is wearing. That one costs 350. Why must this one be this? They get you this one, you are not, a, you are not okay with it. They give you this one, not okay with it. Before you know it, these are children that when they go out with their parents from, 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 uh, 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 from window shopping, it turns to be what shoplifting. We have had issues. We are children. 10, 11, 12 years, they said they caught them. They went to a shop to, uh, uh, to, a shop to shoplift because of what greed. The one you have is not enough for you. And because of that, what your eyes have seen, your mind cannot be able to hold. And you go and take something that does not belong to you. That person is already a candidate of what? Of hell. Unless you cry out unto God, say, Father, deliver me from this what? From this spirit of greed. Why are we saying this? Friends outside there that have trust spirit, we must do everything humanly possible to run away from them. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Greed is very, very dangerous. The Bible made us understand, children, in the book of uh, uh, Second Kings, let me tell us a, 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 a small story to, to tell us that this thing is, is a killer. It's a killer. This is somebody who is, you know, working with an anointed man of God. But look at what he did. Instead of a, a, a getting double blessing from the man of God is working with, what he got is what is cost. I am talking in the book of Second Kings, chapter 5, from verse 20 to 27. Because it's a, very, a, a bit lengthy, I will read this. But all I want you to do is just to give me your ear. Pay attention. I'm talking about what? About Elisha and a servant called Gehazi. Both of them are doing the work of God. And a time came that they saw a man called Naaman. He's a commander of the army of Syria. But the Bible said he has leper. He has gone everywhere seeking for what? Seeking for cure. Seeking for treatment. He could not until he got information that there is a what? A trusted man of God. It's just a so place. If you go there, whatever that man of God tells you to do, you'll be okay. The Bible says he came. And the man of God, Elisha, told him, say, listen, child, it does not matter your rank. You must have gone everywhere. But I know the God I serve, leave it. Go into the Zohar River. Go and what? And bat yourself. Seven times. The man was furious. I was thinking that when the man of God come, he will lay his hands on me. Maybe he will push me. I will fall down and I will shake like this. He was angry. But a servant in his heart says, if this man of God, whatever he tells you, is not all those men of, men of God that are very crafty, that can study you, then you, you somersault. They said, uh, you know, you are under anointing. Go and do what he asks you. The Bible says he went and did exactly. The moment he entered into the river and came out, the leprosy that has been carried for years left him. You know, the man will be overjoyed. Am I right? If you ask him to give everything that he has, he's ready. So he told the man of God, what can I do? Please accept the gift. The man of God said, no. That is not the time to accept gift. It's okay. God bless you. It is well with you. Go. And look at his servant, Gehazi. When the man has gone, you see what grief can bring. Gehazi within his heart. Hey, how did my master leave this man? Look at the whole gold. Look at the silver he brought. I, I will not let this man go. And look at what he did. Look at what he did. I am reading 2 Kings chapter 5. I read from verse 20. He said, but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has paid Naaman the Syrian in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, you see, when the spirit of greed gets you, <coughs> that is why we should not allow it to be part of us at all. He said, as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Verse 21. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down for his chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? 22. And he said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, He said, What? It's a lie. Elisha did not send him. 
My master has sent me saying, Behold, even now they are come to me from Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. He lied. 23. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and there bear them before him. 24. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hands and bestowed them in his own house. You see what Greek can call? And he let the men go and they departed. But he didn't know that a true anointed man of God, the spirit of God is always with him. Even what he did not see physical, God will reveal it to him. Verse 25. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no with him. You see, he lied. He didn't know that what he did in secret, God had revealed it to his servant. 26. And he said unto him, as Elijah said to Gehazi now, Went not my heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servant and men servant? 27, the last verse. Listen to this, children. The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out for his presence a leper as white as a snow. Can you imagine? Greek, the leprosy that left Naaman because of Greek, the Bible says he went unto what God has not unto him, but unto his what his lineage, his children, his household. So Spirit of greed, anyone that has it, we must not have anything to do with that person. If we don't want to incur the wrath of God, if we don't want to go to hell, there are still many things for us to, you know, to look into, but because of time, I will hold it here. Maybe next time we'll meet, if I have the privilege, we'll continue. And I want us children, as we have heard the word of God, I want us to be on our knees. Before then, I want every mic to be open. This is serious. What every mighty open, cry unto God. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every bad influence, every bad friend that will make me not to become whom you want me to be through bad practices. Father, Lord, let such friends be separated from me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh. 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 Let a friend be far away from me, Father. Let a friend be far away from me, Father. Let a friend be far Let a friend be far away from me, Let a friend be far away from me, let a friend be far away from me in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray every friend there is a there's a destruction to me, there's a bad company to me, there's a bad influence to me that does not want me to be what to be ordain me to be, what to create me to be. Let that friend be far away from me. Let that friend be far away from me. Let that friend be far away from me. Friend be far away from me. Let that friend be far away from me. Let that friend be far away from me. Kind of God, again, I want us to open our mouth and cry unto God. Say, Father, any bad influence already in my life, bad influence of what? Of what? Of gossiping, bad influence of anger, bad influence of lack of fear of God. Bad influence of lying, bad influence of greed already in my life. Father, please deliver me. I don't want to go to hell in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, deliver me from every friend that are bad influence. Every friend that are bad influence to me, that are bad influence. Every friends are bad influence to me. Father, deliver me from such kind of friends. Father, deliver me from such kind of friends. Father, deliver me from such kind of 
friends, every friend that have bad influence to me, every friend that have bad influence to me, deliver me from that. Deliver me from such kind of friends. Deliver me from such kind of friends. Father, let such kind of friends be far away from me. Let such kind of friends be far away from me. Let such friends be far away from me. Let such friends be far away from me. Father, deliver me from such kind of friends. Deliver me from such kind of friends. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. to pray to God. We are praying against bad influence. We're going to ask God. Remember, the Bible said, "Whatever I hear you speak, that I will do." We're going to ask God. Say, Father Lord, make me a good influence unto other children. Make me to be of a positive influence unto my friends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and ask God this hour. Ah, Amen. Amen. Father, make me to be of positive influence unto my friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, to be of positive influence to my friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, make me to be of positive influence. To my friends, Father, make me to be of positive influence to my friends. Jesus, make me to be a positive influence to my friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, make me to be a positive influence to my friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus, make me to be a positive influence to my friends. In Jesus Christ, holy name. Jesus, make me to be a positive influence of a good example to my friends. In Jesus Christ, holy name. Amen. 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 Finally, ask God Almighty, say, Father, everything that you have taught me today, any power that wants to come and steal it out of my heart, even as I will discover from the mountain, any power that wants to come and steal it out of my life, Father, that I will not be able to remember, Lord Jesus, let that power be consumed by your fire. In the Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. as we pray this our soul shall it be in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Beloved, are you out there? You have not given your life to Jesus Christ. Hey. Already made vessel for Satan to use. Satan will always influence you. But if you, are, if you give your life back to the one that created you, you will be able to guide you. That negative influence, that bad friends will not contaminate you. So that you will become the original purpose and plan that God has for you. So if you are there, you want to give your life unto Jesus Christ? <coughs> Repeat this short prayer of confession and mercy after me. Wow. Say, Lord Jesus, okay. having had your word, no, now I realize <laughs> why I have been experiencing <laughs> some negative behaviors or influences in my life. Now I know through your words that negative influences will take one to hell. Father, I don't want to go to hell. Lord Jesus, that is why I front to your feet, cry unto you. Come into my life. Take charge of my life. 
I confess you today to be my Lord and personal Savior. Let your mercy take away my name from the book of death. Let my name be written in the book of life. God of mercy, as you have given me the privilege to hear your word today, I receive the power from now on to be of a good and positive influence onto the life of others. Because you have said that I am the light of the world. Therefore, Lord, by your mercy, by adventure, every bad influence in my life, Father Lord, today has been taken away. Because from now on, I am now a new creation. Old things, old influences, old bad behaviors, they are now passed away. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing my word and my prayer of mercy. Let your righteous hand uphold me and let the truth of your word continually be a guide to my life. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. I've made a prayer, child of God. I want to reassure you that heaven is right now rejoicing over the decision. And we in this mountain, we happily welcome you and we pray that God Almighty, His infinite mercy, through His word today, has delivered us and has given us the power to resist every external bad influences that will make us to derail from the word of the Lord. And today we receive the power to affect the people around us, the world around us in a positive way to the glory of God in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise, praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, this is how far we can go. Uh, before we go to the communion, Shepherd of a soul, 